Welcome to St. Ambrose as we gather in prayer. This weekend, the gospel really challenges us to be trustworthy to the Lord. If God can trust us in small things, God will trust us in big things. More importantly, God is trustworthy. The more we give of ourselves to the Lord, the more the trustworthy God will take care of us, his people. Let's pray for the grace Welcome to, to trust St. Ambrose the Lord as we gather in prayer. our faith. Our this weekend, the gospel will do really what challenges God us to be to trustworthy do. to the Lord. Let us pray. If God can trust us in small things, God will trust us in big things. More importantly, God is trustworthy. The more we give of ourselves to the Lord, the more the Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Ambrose as we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We welcome this week in the waters of baptism Liam Claude Slomanski, Gianna Marie Barnes, and Milana May Barnes. Join the Women's Guild for their Fall Harvest Luncheon to be held Monday, September 26th. Enjoy a great lunch and some wonderful entertainment. Tickets are still available at the parish front desk. The Brunswick Knights of Columbus will host a one-day bus tour to Columbus for the Ohio March for Life 
on Wednesday, October 5th. The cost of the trip is $25 per person. A box lunch is provided. See the bulletin for more information. Our first soup suppers is on Wednesday, September 21st at 6 p.m. Gather together for a delicious soup dinner, great fellowship, with spiritual reflection and discussions that focus on one of our parish ca ca charisms. We welcome with joyful hospitality. This year's Catholic Works of Mercy Blanket Sunday will be held on October 8th and 9th. Donations of new blankets, sheet sets, pillowcases, towels, and washcloths are appreciated. As we prepare to begin Mass today, we remind you to please silence your cell phones. Thank you for creating a spirit of reverence. Please welcome Michael Music to our parish. Good morning, everyone. Like she stated, my name is Michael Music, and I'm in the diaconate formation program here in the Diocese of Cleveland. Um, as part of the formation process, besides just classes taking and a lot of prayer, there's also hands-on education out in, the, out in the field, field education. So each year we are assigned a parish that's not our own home parish since until ordination, you will not know where you're going to be assigned, we should say. And uh, so for the next seven to eight months, I'll be out here at St. Ambrose. And I says, and I'm, I'm excited about it because you guys are very well known in the diaconate formation community and out at the seminary. Everyone talks about how vibrant and welcoming and friendly St. Ambrose is. And with six, six classmates of mine, to get actually assigned out here is quite, a, quite an accomplishment to be picked for that. So um, it, it's nice going to different parishes each year because you get to see uh, each parish has its own type of uh, personality with the people and the activities that they're involved with. It, it, it's a wonderful mixture. Um, I'm here this morning with my wife who's back here. I know it's not fall yet in a fallish color top. <laughs> And uh, we just celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary this past June. Uh, my wife and I, we have, thank you very much. My wife and I have uh, two adult children, a daughter, Katie, our son, Joey, his wife, Jess, and our grandson, Roman. Um, we both grew up in the Parma Heights area and both attended Valley Forge and graduated from there, although we didn't meet till years after graduation. Upon graduating, I went off and joined the Navy and became an aviation electrician's mate with F-14s. Now, that's the original Top Gun aircraft that they used, and I was stationed aboard the USS Saratoga, which is now decommissioned. Um, after that, shortly after returning home, I started my career as an air traffic controller out at Cleveland Center. Now, it's during those years uh, that we raised our family and we were active participants at uh, Mass at St. John Bosco in Parma Heights. I have to use my cheat sheet here and stuff. So <laughs> in 2007, we, we moved to Berea. We still remain with St. John Bosco for a number of years, but then in uh, 2016, we joined St. Mary of the Falls Parish in Olmstead Falls. Uh, during this time, uh, I, I retired in 2014, and at that time I decided to research my, my faith a little more, spend more time listening to how God was calling me in my life. So then in 2018, to my surprise, I entered formation. God willing, I'll be ordained this May. Again, I'm very excited about being here with you. With all the ministries you have, I hope that I'm able to be with each and every one of you at one of these. I, I started looking at all the things offered, and I think that even if... I did a different one every day. I don't know if in the seven months I could actually partake of each one. So know that you are in my prayers all, always, and I will continue just I have for all the other parishes I have been assigned to. All I ask is that if you could remember my 
my, me in your prayers and my family, and I'm sure that God will take care of all. Thank you for your time. Lord Jesus, you call all to the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with the fruit of your kingdom. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of every grace and blessing. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask, that we may sell our grain, and the Sabbath, that we may display the wheat? We will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy, buy the lowly for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuse of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. 
Praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. Praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. High above all the nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is his glory. Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high and looks upon the heavens and earth below? Praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. He raises up the lowly from the dust. From the dunghill he lifts up the poor to seat them with princes, with the princes of his own people. Praise the Lord who lifts up the poor. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, the person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you're not trustworthy with that, what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So last night was a very, very big night here at St. Ambrose. The Knights of Columbus had their annual, like, annual dinner recognition. Deacon Matt, big night for Deacon Matt. What, did you, what, was, what was the trophy you walked away with last night? Clergy of the Year. Clergy of the Year. Give them a round of applause, right? And it was truly, truly, truly a wonderful gathering last night. Knights of Columbus, uh, Night of the Year, Family of the Year, Clergy of the Year. Wonderful, wonderful gathering. There was just a great spirit about it. But there was a moment of crisis in the whole thing. So if you know Dave Heilman, right, Vince? Dave Heilman makes the best pie. So for the event, he ramped up his pie-making machine, right? And he made pie. He made apple, triple berry, cherry, and pecan. There were, give or take, 100 people in the room, and how many slices of pie were there? 100, which means you can only pick, and you could see the anguish 
the knights were like grappling, like they were fighting over each other to see who was gonna go in the kitchen and wash the dishes, why? Because there were about 100 people and how many slices of pie were there? Which means you could only pick and the choice was virtually excruciating. Am I exaggerating? No, it was really a hard choice. But it was also the right thing to only pick one. The gospel challenges us, reminds us powerfully that you and I every day, there may be many, many choices, but there really needs to only be one choice. And that choice is God. And if you catch the language of the gospel, you sit there like, oh my gosh, am I supposed to give God everything? Well, honestly, the answer is yes, right? We've been hearing that over the last several weeks. But the language of the gospel is clear. You cannot serve, serve both God and mammon. It doesn't mean you can't have both. But when you make the choice for the Lord, you've got to work your way back up to the other, the second reading, the psalm, and the first reading. That the more you serve the Lord, the more you make the hard choice, which is also the right choice, which for us should really be the only choice. When you and I choose to serve the Lord, the blessings follow in abundance. When you and I make that conscious, intentional choice. So I watch people anguish over pie. How much more in a discerning way we should anguish in the best way over choosing the Lord. And we make that conscious choice to serve the Lord. And when we do so, from there, the blessings of God are overwhelming. Literally, to that second reading, when we give back to God what God has given to us, it's never been meant for us alone. The more we give of ourselves back to God, the more you will have everything else you need besides. Amen? Amen. But it has to be a conscious, clear choice. As we walk into the week, pray mightily. Pray mightily for the grace, clearly in your mind, especially in your heart, knowing that no matter what situation you are in, in that moment, choose the Lord. In that decision, choose the Lord. In that struggle, choose the Lord. And then watch the blessings follow. Secondly, in the bulletin this week and after Mass today, there are a thousand choices here at St. Ambrose of ways that you can serve the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Find one. You could say, I am too old. You would never say that, Irene, right? You could say, I am too young. You could say, I am too busy. You could say, there are other people to do that. There is a way that all of us can make the choice to serve the Lord. So there's a ministry display at Coffee and Donuts. There's tons of things in the bulletin. Go to the website. Why? Because clearly, if you choose to serve the Lord, the blessings will follow abundantly. There's even very practical ways. So for those who can't do some of the other things. Join the prayer team when somebody is being called home to heaven. If all of us choose to serve the Lord, the personal blessings will be abundant and the blessings of his community will be overwhelming. Amen? Amen. And thirdly, so God bless the people that showed up yesterday. You literally see the, hall, the walls for another Habitat for Humanity. Yes? And at the end of this, the woman who's going to receive the house came, and she started already, literally, reading the comments, I'm praying for you, we care about you, you know, that were written on the beams. She's sobbing in that moment. I'm going to shut up here in a moment, so it's a relatively short homily, yes? Yes? Before you run to your car to get breakfast, which all of us can wait four minutes for, go and sign your name and offer a thought, a prayer. Why? Because that's one more conscious choice where we choose to serve the Lord. I literally watched them anguish over the decision of pie. For us, 
there really needs to be one choice. That is, for God. When you choose the Lord, the blessings that will come and follow will be both now and forever and ever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God is very trustworthy, trustworthy beyond measure, and that's what gives us the confidence to bring our prayers, large and small, always before the Lord. Let us pray. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be an effective witness for honesty and justice, speaking out with courage against systems that take advantage of the weak. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, that they may see the power of prayer and the wisdom of respectful dialogue, so that a spirit of dignity for all people may be promoted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor in body, mind, or spirit, that God will lift their burdens and help them to find ways to meet their needs and prosper. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper gratitude, that we may appreciate all the gifts, opportunities, and benefits that we have been given, and recognize them as signs of God's love for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Ruth Badeshewski, the intention of this Mass, and for all who have died, especially remembering Robert T. Sklenka, Carly Kapek, Susan Morgan, Jennifer Ilgalskis, and all lives lost in Ukraine. May God comfort their families who mourn and unite all our faithful departed into the joy of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in our hearts. for those who serve to protect us, for the aged and vulnerable of our parish community, and for the one person here who needs our prayers the most. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, listen to the prayers that we offer. Give us the grace, the wisdom, the courage to choose you, to serve you, and to build your kingdom of peace and mercy for all. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in you we live and move and have our being. Each day you show to us your unconditional love, the outpouring of your spirit. It is your spirit that strengthens us on the journey. It is your spirit that gives us the wisdom to choose wisely. And it is your spirit that unites our voices as we pray, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And together we join our voices as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from all sin, safe from every distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sin, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus who gave his whole life in service to us so that we can make the choice to serve the Lord. Blessed, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be.
Good morning, church family. My name is Gail Oboy, and I'm the spiritual life and adult faith formation leader at St. Ambrose, along with Diane Heilman. And as summer ends and falls upon us, we are getting back into our routines, and routines keep us disciplined and accountable. And that is real, really what our Christian walk is all about, being disciplined and accountable to God. And I wanna share a few opportunities that you have available here at St. Ambrose to do just that. First, to the women of the parish, I'd love to invite you to our Walking with Purpose Catholic Women's Bible Study. It kicks off Tuesday, September 20th. We have a Coffee Connect, 9.30 a.m. in Mother Teresa Room, 6.30 p.m. in Hilkert Hall, or uh, 6.30 Thursday, virtually. All women are invited. Last year, we had over 100 women participate in our inaugural, inaugural year, and these women grew in friendship and fellowship and in their faith in Jesus through the Bible study and our small faith sharing. And we'd love to have you join us at this week's Coffee Connect and see what you think. No obligation to stay or join. Secondly, I'd like to invite all married couples to join our monthly Friday night date nights of marriage enrichment. Whether you've been married 50 days or 50 years, all marriage needs intentionality. And marriage is where our enemy loves to strike. So during our date night, we will enjoy food, fellowship, and small group sharing in a home setting. Join us as we begin our choice wine sessions this Friday at 6.30. And thirdly, if you struggle in the Christian faith, have questions, need answers, or know someone who does, consider signing up for Alpha this fall. It's a safe place to learn about our Christian faith in a non-judgmental environment. It's safe to ask questions and seek answers. If you have a family member that has fallen away from our faith, invite them to join us. It's this Tuesday at 6.30, and there'll be a meal and a discussion. The sessions are weekly and last for 10 weeks, and you can find invitations to take to those family members in Hilkert Hall. You can learn more about all these ministries, talk to me, sign up, Grab some literature over in Hilkert Hall after you get your donut and coffee. Um, and if you're not stopping over, you can also go to our website, St. Ambrose Adult Faith Formation, to learn more or to sign up. Thank you so much. Yeah, let me just be clear on this walking with purpose thing. Right, so for the women who are women, so you can do Tuesday morning in person, you can do Tuesday evening in person, or you can do Thursday virtually, which means that everyone can find a way to participate, yes? Yes? yes. Right? But it's a choice, right? And how do we make the choice for the Lord? After Mass, coffee, donuts, but there's also wonderful literature available for you. Outside, Habitat for Humanity, take one minute, sign your name, and offer a prayer. Let us stand and pray. Our prayer today is for all of our catechists, those in the teaching ministry of the church. Lord God, source of all wisdom and knowledge, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to live among us and to proclaim his message of faith, hope, and love to all the nations. In your goodness, Bless our sisters and brothers who have offered themselves as catechists to your church. Strengthen them with your gifts that they may teach by word and by example the truth which comes from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Lord First of all, thank you for what you do. And after Mass at the uh, offertory table, there's a little gift uh, for, for you. If you can stop back there. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks Amen. be to God. Have a good week, everyone. Amen. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives life to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways.
Thank you so much for joining us this weekend at St. Ambrose. This week we enter into the autumn season and we're going to start to see literally the harvest of blessing, the beautiful changing of the leaves. And as the season changes, let this be a moment first and foremost that in every season God is trustworthy. That's what we talked about all during Mass. And let's use this autumn season to count our blessings, to be so aware of the goodness and the graciousness of God in our lives. Take some time to enjoy the beauty of this autumn season. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessings. Have a great week.